Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So tonight we're going to be talking about my five biggest bourbon regrets, my five biggest mistakes in bourbon, my five worst bottles in bourbon of 2021. 2021 was a really good year on Whiskey Row. We grew the channel a ton. We got some amazing bottles. We had some amazing experiences, both toward the end of the year at the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, hunting George D. Stagg. Even earlier in the year, we just it was a great, great year for Whiskey Row. But it wasn't perfect. I definitely, definitely had made a couple of mistakes. Wish some things that I wish I uh, had done differently. But these five bottles, and and we're gonna start off with some honorable mentions because there were a lot of mistakes in 2021. But if you end up enjoying the video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. It does a lot for us, and we really appreciate it. Now let's start off with the bonus items. These are the ones, the honorable mentions. These are the ones that were just terrible, terrible decisions. Uh, one of them was to buy anything Woodenville. I bought it down in North Carolina as a store pick. It was not good. I opened it up, didn't like it. Let it, you know, then I let it sit for a little while, tried it again, still terrible. It's, it, something was wrong with it. I think it was a tainted bottle. I think it had cork taint. There was something definitely wrong with it, but it was bad. It was the first Woodenville I had and it was really, really bad. Well, I thought it was cork taint. So I traded it away. Somebody wanted it out in Washington state. Y'all pointed out, hey, that was a store pick. It's not necessarily a mainline product. So I went out and I bought a Woodenville finished, like a port barrel finished one. And, and it was terrible too. I, it was terrible. It was one of their mainline products. I didn't like it. I tried it. I ended up giving away, actually, I think I drain poured it. It was that bad. It was one of the few things that I've actually drain poured. And that was a good decision that I made in 2021. And a new year's resolution of mine is to not buy more Woodenville product. If you like Woodenville, good for you. If you work at Woodenville, uh, take this as constructive feedback. Uh, and, and hopefully uh, things can, can change. Maybe it's just my flavor profile, things that I like. It just wasn't good, didn't like it. Now the last honorable mention for worst bourbon decisions, worst bourbon buys, just overhyped, overpriced, not worth it at all to me, was the Blue Run 14 year. I had somebody help me get that, which was super gracious of them to get it for me. I paid them for it and then I got it, I opened it and it was just completely meh. It wasn't bad, it wasn't gross. There was nothing particularly wrong with it. But for the price and for the hype, it just wasn't there. I mean, if it was a you know, $60, $70, $80 bourbon, maybe, maybe it would have been great. But the, the premium price that they were asking, and now the secondary prices on that thing, which are you know, into the you know, four or $500 range, it's not worth it at all. Like, I would much rather have a 1920 from Old Forester. I'd much rather have almost anything that's considered a quality good bourbon in the $50 or $60, $70 range. I think those are way, way better than that 14 year uh, blue run. It was just completely underwhelming. So the reason those are honorable mentions is because I don't have the bottles anymore. So I couldn't really put them in the top five because I like to have a bottle and show you guys. And anyway, so those were honorable mentions because they're traded away. I don't have any, have them anymore and I don't regret getting rid of them, but I do regret buying them and spending the money in the first place. Now, the first bottle that I have for you tonight, one of them was this Penelope. I was excited. I've heard good things about Penelope and it's just not good. This was a store pick. Uh, that somebody got for me. It's 114 proof barrel strength Penelope. And there's something in the flavor, there's something in it that is just not good. I thought it might be like a tainted bottle, but then the person who got it for me, who they also got a bottle, they actually sent me a two ounce sample from their bottle of this and I to put them side by side and I did, and they taste pretty much the same. There, there might be an ever so slight difference, but the the note in my bottle that I don't like is in his bottle as well. This just really didn't live up to the hype. I love a good barrel proof store pick and Penelope is supposed to be good stuff, but this particular one, whatever it is about it, I don't care for it. It's the only Penelope I've ever had. So maybe other Penelope products are good and delicious, but this one just didn't work for me at all. Now you guys know on the channel, I try not to be negative. I'm always trying to be to be optimistic, to look for the best in, in the bottles that I have. But sometimes there are just bottles and experiences that I have with bottles that are not good. And it's not that maybe it's a terrible brand, maybe it's a bad store pick, maybe it's a tainted bottle, whatever it is, it's just, it's not working for me. The next one, kind of like the Blue Run, it's not bad, but it was just didn't live up to the hype for me. And that was the Thomas S. More finished series. Now, I ended up buying all three bottles the same day. They hit a store in Virginia and I was like, oh, I'll buy all three. It'll be a cool video that I'll film because I'll put them all side by side and talk about which is the best one. It's like a, a video in a can, right? It's like a super easy one to do. 
I got them. I opened up this one first and it's just not very good. And it just completely sucked the wind out of my sails. Like I just didn't even want to do the video. Each one of these things ran for about $70. So 70 times three, it was a lot of money to outlay. I just didn't even want to film the video at all. So I ended up giving away the port finished one, the Chardonnay one I have on the shelf behind me, still unopened. So maybe that one's really delicious. But this one, this is the, the Cabernet Sauvignon cask finished one, and it's just not good. Sometimes companies and distilleries decide to do an experiment and they decide to like Bardstown Prisoner is a great example of that. Oh, that would have been a great bottle for this video. Actually, the Bardstown Prisoner was equally disappointing as this one. Oh, I should have had that. Anyways, honorable mention goes to the uh, Bardstown The Prisoner, which was, again, another wine-finished bourbon that I don't think worked out at all. It didn't work. I would have much rather had a mainline Bardstown product, another bottle of Discovery, for example, for that price. Uh, that's actually even $50 more than this. So, you know, this coming in at $70 was it's just not worth it. And, and I know it's 1792 Distillery, so it's a Sazerac company. You would think Buffalo Trace, that association, it would it would be better but it's not. Now, these aren't in any particular order. They're all pretty much equally regretted. Some are at different price points than others, but they're just not that good. And this one's no surprise. I've talked about how disappointing this was in other videos. It's a St. Cloud. I didn't know what I was getting. I saw this bottle, the guy at the store, you know, sales guy was like, oh, this is a great one. I'm hearing great things about it. It's supposed to be amazing. So this is like a, a, a two-year-old cast strength bourbon. It, it's just not good. And the price there as I ended up paying like 110, 115 for this thing. Totally overhyped, not worth it at all. Honestly, if this was a $30 bottle, I would say it's a stretch. Uh, it's, you know, maybe again, it's, it's not a drain pour. It's not like gross. There's nothing wrong with it. And it was a waste of my money. And it was a, one of my, one of my big regrets of 2021. And I think across the board, a lot of these regrets I have because I didn't do the research beforehand. So I guess that's a lesson from this video, which is if you're going to go spend a bunch of money on a bourbon or a whiskey, make sure you know what you're buying because it's easy to waste a lot of money in whiskey. All right. Next up, <sighs> copper tongue from Orphan Barrel. This, it, it's a beautiful bottle. I like Orphan Barrel stuff conceptually. I love the bottles. I love the artwork on them. I love the bottle style. I love this. I mean, the copper, the copperhead snake, I think is what it is on a wrapped around the still. Very, very cool artwork. 16 year straight bourbon whiskey. The problem is, is it's 16 year old George Dickel. It tastes, I'm not, I'm not definitively saying it's George Dickel, but it tastes just like George Dickel. I have a 15 year George Dickel, which I paid $50 for which I guess is kind of worth it. You're kind of getting, you know, a 15 year uh, single barrel George Dickel for 50, $52, I think is what I paid for it. This $100 for one more year and it tastes just the same. It might be a teeniest little bit better instead of using the Lincoln County process like I think they do with the George Dickel and I, I could be wrong on there. Uh, maybe they skip that part with this, but still it's the same stuff and it tastes the same and whatever little differences in finishing and bottling that they do in filtration still tastes the same. I probably wouldn't be able to tell you which was which. They're that close. Uh, this one, you know, in blinds has done a teeny bit better than the George Dickel 15, but, but barely. The George Dickel eight year bourbon beat both, if that makes you feel better. If you're looking for a, a decent whiskey that's not a, a bad decision, go get that George Dickel bourbon, uh, eight year age stated bourbon. That's a pretty solid one. That's pretty tasty, but uh, normal, normal, normal old uh, George Dickel, Tennessee whiskey and this old copper tongue, not doing it for me. And I'm not trying to beat on George Dickel. Uh, George Dickel, when it says George Dickel, and I'm not going to beat up on that because we know what we're getting. Orphan Barrel, what were you thinking? This was a bad decision to, to use this. I know this isn't your first foray into bourbon. However, I would have to say that this was a mistake. You shouldn't have called it straight bourbon whiskey. You should have said 16 year cask strength. And by cask strength, seriously guys, it's 44.9%. So to be like, oh, it's cask strength at 90 proof. Why even say it? It's 90 proof. Like most stuff that's 90 proof isn't, I mean, it's just, it's not false advertising because if it's if that's the cask strength, that's the cask strength. My point is it was a bad decision to, to market that on the label and then to not say Tennessee whiskey, instead just try to pass it off as straight bourbon whiskey. I think it was a bad move and for the price, it definitely wasn't worth it. Conceptually, I like what Orphan Barrel is doing with this series. However, this was a mistake both for me and for them. This was one of the biggest mistakes I made and I made it a long time ago. It was very early in 2021 when I made this mistake and I bought this barrel. 
This is a gray label barrel 15 year bourbon. Cask strength coming in at 104.9 proof. And this was really just a letdown. It's not bad. Like with some of these other bottles, you know, there might not have been very good. This wasn't bad, but it was $250. This was, this is actually to this day, I think the most expensive bourbon I have. I have bottles that are much more valuable than this one, but actual cash out of pocket to buy a bottle. I think this is still my most expensive bourbon at $249. And it's just totally not worth it in any way, shape, or form. I have a Barrel Craft Spirits 14 year, so one year less than this, that was $150 cheaper. It was $100. Now, $100 for a 14 year Barrel Craft Spirits single barrel bourbon, tack on one more year, slap on a gray label. It's not worth it. Totally overpriced, overhyped. And now, I don't know if you guys have seen, but Barrel Craft Spirits is getting ready to cash in on the success of their Seagrass Rye. And they're going to put out a 16-year gray label Canadian rye and, and sell it for $200, $250. And I'm predicting now, I'm not going to buy it. I'm just not. I'm straight up not going to do it. I've, I've learned my lesson to not do that. Uh, but it's not going to be worth it at all. I will be the first to say that Barrel Craft Spirits Seagrass is really good. It's one of my favorite finished ryes probably that I've ever had. Uh, it's not particularly special, but it's just a just a really good sipping apricot bomb, just delicious. And the Barrel Seagrass at $70, $80, is, is, it's worth it. It's good. This Canadian rye that they're going to put out for $60, $250, come on, guys, it's not going to be worth it. And if you go out there and buy it, you know, it, it's, I, I, I want to hear, if you go out and you buy the Barrel Craft Spirits Gray Label 16 year Canadian rye seagrass thing that they're going to be putting out in the next month or two. If you buy it, try it, please let me know. So I ended up learning some lessons this year. I definitely bought some stuff that I, I kind of regret some stuff that was definitely overhyped, overpriced, not worth it. Some of those are frankly my fault. I should have known better, but some of these, I mean, barrel craft spirits, a reputable thing. Orphan barrels, pretty reputable thing. And 1792 with the Thomas S. Moores, we, they're, they're supposed to be good stuff and, and they're supposed to live up to some of the hype and they didn't. Well, those are my most overhyped and most overpriced bottles of 2021 that I definitely regret buying. Hopefully you've learned some lessons tonight because I know that I learned some lessons in 2021. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.